Hi, I'm Dr. Bear, and I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on plotting in Mathematica. So Mathematica has some nice symbolic capabilities, but it also has some visualization capabilities that can be really helpful. In this tutorial, I'm going to assume you're familiar with very basic mathematic functions and delimiters. If you're not, I suggest that you first go watch my introduction to Mathematica because then you'll learn about how to use delimiters. So there will be a link to that tutorial here, but let's get started. I have my keyboard viewer so you can see what I'm typing in. Uh, for exercise one, I'm asking us to plot a Gaussian function. So it really just starts with the plot command. I can just type plot and then I specify some arguments. I'm going to specify this Gaussian and to get the exponential I can't just put in the letter E. Mathematica won't recognize that as the exponential and it won't like it. One option is to get the exponential from a palette. So here's a palette and I've got the basic math assistant palette here. Under advanced there's the exponential which I can click and then it brings it in like this. There's another way to get the exponential. I'll move the palette aside for a moment. Uh, a way that I like is I use keyboard shortcuts. So if I type escape and then E, E, and then escape again, it gives me the exponential. So then I can use control 6 or on a Mac it's command 6 and then it raises it to a certain power. So I'm going to just put in here minus and then X and then raise X to the power 2 again. And now I need to specify a range for X. So I make a list and I specify that it should go from negative 5 to 5. If I just plot that, well here's a nice plot of the Gaussian function. Some things that I might want to do, uh, specify axes labels. So type axes label and I, tab completion is nice because it gives me this arrow also. I'm going to make a list and so the first one is X and then maybe the next one will make it F of X like this. And what happens when I hit enter? Uh, it puts in x and then f of x. So it interprets this as a multiplication. So if I want it to show up exactly, well, I'll put in here quotes and run it again. And now it's f of x and x. Axes labels are very nice and they're important. Exercise two. Now we introduce some unknown constant, sigma. And there are a couple of ways to do this. One very nice way is a uh, dimensionless way where we would define u is equal to x over sigma. So now I'm just going to copy from above, copy, and I'm going to paste it here. And really it's just plotting u now because uh, this whole thing is u. And so if I just do that, uh, I can make my label be x divided by u. So I just did control slash, uh, control forward slash, and that gets me the fraction here. And if I plot this, okay, now I have x over u. So that's a nice unitless way to do it. But there's also another way. Maybe if you want to play with this parameter a little bit, we might want to use the manipulate command. To do this, I'm going to start with the manipulate command. And the first argument we're going to give it is a plot command. So I'm just going to paste the previous command that I copied in here. See, I have the exponential and then the range for x, axes labels. Well, I'm just going to highlight this x here. As soon as I highlight it, I hit control forward slash and then I get this division. And now I put in sigma, I type escape s and then escape. There's sigma. Now, this plot won't work because first off, I haven't completed my manipu manipulate command. And second, Mathematica wouldn't know what to do with sigma. So if I try that, it just plots nothing. So what we have to do with the manipulate command is outside of the plot, I'm going to type here another input, which is actually a list. And the first entry of the list is itself a list. And we identify a variable, sigma, which is a variable we're going to vary. I'm going to give it an initial value of, say, 1. And then let's give it a label standard deviation because that's the role that it's playing here. And let's let the standard deviation vary from point 0.1 to 3. So when I 
run this, now I get this little slider, and if I click the plus, it shows you the initial value which I specified, and I can now use the slider to vary it, and it changes the sigma value, and then it shows, it updates the plot based on the value of sigma that's specified by the slider, or the text box. I can set this back to 1, or change it to 2, and see how that goes. Okay, so we're manipulating it. Now one thing to point out is when we get down here, the Gaussian goes beyond what the screen is showing me. So one way to do that is in the plot command, so here's the plot command, I'm going to give it a new argument, plot range, all. And so it makes sure that all the data is shown on the axes. Okay, so we've achieved exercise two. Let's go on to exercise three. Now, in exercise three, we introduce two unknown parameters. So let's just, I'm going to take the manipulate from above, and let's put it down here, copy, paste. And I'm just going to add here an X, and then if I hit control minus, that's like the underscore, so I'll, I have this new constant, x0, and so that tells me, okay, in my manipulate, I have a slider for sigma, but I need to add a slider for x0. So I copied and pasted. This is all in the manipulate command, so I put here x, control underscore, 0. Let's let it start at 0. And here it plays the role of the mean for the Gaussian and this range should go from 0 to, let's say, 3, should be a positive number. And if I hit plot, now I have two sliders. One that controls the mean, so watch what happens. Now the Gaussian shifts right as the mean increases. I take that back. I guess the mean doesn't have to be positive. Let's make it go from negative 3 to 3. And now I have control. I can slide it left or right and the standard deviation makes the Gaussian wider or narrower. Okay, so there's our exercise three. Now exercise four is slightly different. I get to show you a couple of uh, new functions here, I suppose. Uh, we're gonna make a rectangular pulse and it's Fourier transform. And sometimes it'll be useful to have them side by side. So let's try that. Let's start just by plotting a unit pulse. So plot. To get this, uh, th these u's are actually unit step functions. So our rectangular pulse will be unit step. And you can see Mathematica has you know tab completion. It wants to suggest for me unit step. So I just I can choose unit step and then hit tab. That's very nice. And we'll put in t minus. Uh, for now, let's put in a fraction. So 1 divided by. So that was a control forward slash 1 half. OK. And then we're going to subtract from it. Uh, actually, this one should be a plus. Let's subtract from it the same thing, but we change it to a t minus 1 half. And let's, let's let t go from 0, negative 5 to 5. Plot that. And here it is. It starts at 0, and then at t equals 1 half, it jumps up to 1, and then drops back down. We should put in labels. x label is t, y label is r of t. Okay, so there are some labels. Now let's enclose this in a manipulate command so that we can put in an unknown parameter t. So there's the manipulate command. We'll put in t here. And for manipulate, we're going to specify first argument at list, t, initial value. Let's let it be 1. And we'll call this width. And it maybe it should go from point 0.1 to, say, 3. Okay, so now, here it is, I can vary the width of my rectangular pulse. What I want to do is I want to plot its Fourier transform, which happens to be this function. We're going to plot it right side by side. So one way to do that is to not just use the plot command, but we're going to use the graphics row command. So graphics row, put that in here, and the plot is an input to the graphics row, but it's not just plot, actually. So let me, let me do this so you can see the structure. 
graphics row, and then we give it a list of plot commands. So I'm going to give it two plot commands, so I put in my comma just for so I don't forget. And I'm going to take this plot command right here, and I'm going to put it in here as the first argument, and I'm going to paste it in also for the second argument. And then you can see how this goes. We'll change it in a second, but now I've got two plots side by side. As I vary the width, it affects both of the plots. Now, it's unnecessary to have two of the same plot side by side, so we're going to change the second plot, and we're just going to use this function right here, the Fourier transform, like I said, of the rectangle function. So we'll put this in. It's t, and then sine and pi, so escape, p, escape, pi, and then to multiply, of course, you need a space, and then a t, and then an f, and then I'm going to highlight this sign and control forward slash to divide. And then I'm going to copy this pi tf here. I think I made an error. Um, this t does not belong, so let's change that. This t does not belong here. So now if I plot this, I have an error. The problem is that there's no t in this expression for the second plot, and Mathematica doesn't like that. So there is, however, an f, so let's just change it to f, see if that works. This is all right, but part of my graph is cut off, so I'm going to put in my plot command here, plot range all. OK, so now you can see as I change the width of the rectangle pulse, the width of the Fourier transform changes. So it's a principle known as uncertainty, where uh, if the original pulse is highly localized in time, so we do that highly localized in time, well, the Fourier transform becomes broader in frequency. That's kind of a conceptual aside. So let me just wrap up here. I've shown you a few different things. I showed you how to just do a very basic plot. And then I showed you how to plot unitless things when, you, when that's pretty straightforward and simple. But there's also this manipulate command which allows you to use a slider to control an unknown variable, and then you can see how that affects the response here. Of course, you could use multiple unknown variables to change the width here or the, the position of the peak. And then finally, I showed you how to use manipulate and then plot things side by side. If you found this helpful, please like the video, share the channel, like the channel, uh, subscribe, and um, leave comments below. I wish you a very fantastic day. Thanks.